This for me isn't just about creating a dish, it's about creating a feeling. I want to put a smile on the judges' faces. This is green tea cured salmon with compressed apple and green strawberries. And then there's a frozen yogurt foam. My scent was smell. So this is supposed to be getting on top of a mountain first thing in the morning. It's like sandalwood and pine and lemon and zesty. That's the forest. The whole idea was just my time in the snow, skiing and snowboarding all day, and then sitting down for dinner around a fire. <laughs> That's great. So this is all about the sound of a fire crackling. And then as you get through a little bit of the dish, lift this and it should bring you back to sitting next to a fire. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Let's tuck in. You do such clever stuff. It's only clever if it tastes good. I think what Jamie's done, and I'm very proud of him, I think he's put a perfect theatrical piece together in the MasterChef kitchen. You've got the smell of the smoke, you've got the smell of the pine and the lemon, and you've got a very simple, clean dish. What I love about the dish is the, the subtle flavour of yoghurt, but the curing really let it down. For me, that curing is just dull. All his theatre took me there, but the dish, once I put it in my mouth, didn't. Ooh. What he's failed to do is he's failed to connect the smoke, the pine and the citrus with that dish. Yeah. You get it in the smell, mm. but you don't get it in the taste. No. The dish is flat, which is a shame, because this, I mean, his story, his story, I was there, I was there with him. I was actually quite jealous, because I thought, that's a little great memory to have. And he really thought about it with all of this, but this has to do the talking. Oh, yeah. Amy, you've had two wins in a row. Momentum, history shows, is what gets people over the line, takes them to being a master chef. Have you maintained the momentum of this dish? I'm feeling a bit nervous now after I've seen what everyone else has done. Mm. I think Jamie's act was a hard one to follow, so hopefully I've done enough. What's the dish and how have you incorporated sound? Now we're going to start with a track of about 30 seconds, which will just include sounds of the ocean, which will then move on to sounds of the ocean with a crackling fire. I grew up in a seaside town. We spent weekends eating oysters off the rocks, fishing. We used to cook mussels on the beach with a fire going. So you'll start off with the oyster, with just the sounds of the ocean, which will give you the impression of something fresh, light, but summery. And then that will move into the sounds of the ocean, along with the crackling fireside, onto your second course of the seafood stew. Amy, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. What do you reckon? I like it. The idea of warming yourself by the fire with a big mug of soup and some damper. I mean, it resonates in lots of ways. I hope there's a bit of smokiness in her seafood stew, because that would really, really link the whole thing together. Right, shall we taste and listen? Oyster first, yeah? Gee, that, that first element, the oyster, worked it, so brilliantly with, it works. with the waves. She's tied that in really nicely. I think it's very Amy. I think it's very rustic. The simplicity of putting up a beautifully shucked oyster with a mignonette dressing. But I would have liked the seafood a little bit more carefully prepared, because I just feel it's a bit mucky. Also, the fish is overcooked. 
And the, your idea about the smoke, you know, a bit of smoke paprika in here or something yeah. might have just done the trick to tie it in a bit. And I think you're right, the first phase, you know, oyster, sound of seagulls and sea, it's perfect. And then she loses me on this, because I'm, even though it's seafood, it's not necessarily a dish I'd expect to eat on the beach. Well, I suppose we've got to just ask ourselves, does that take me to the seaside? This does. This does. This doesn't. Good luck, sweetie. Good luck, Lazzle Dog. Today I think you in the sense of sight. I hope that I've made sight really shine on my plate. I reckon this week you've been a little bit different. Mm. Has uh, having Hester around thrown you slightly? Has it sort of, I don't know, has it made you nervous? I think a bit of everything. Like, I'm definitely nervous. Like, I want to impress Hester a lot. And I guess I've tried to be a little bit different, a bit more modern in my cooking and I just feel I have to step it up a little bit more. What is the dish? Cured salmon with a beetroot jelly. Then you've got coriander oil, pickle, radish, fresh radish, and a lime creme fresh. I was really confused about the whole visual side of it, and I just yeah. thought, just make a look pretty in the plate, but I wasn't going to win the challenge on that. So right. let's kind of listen to Heston and how he plates up. It looks like a beetroot planted in soil, but it's a cucumber, ginger and miso jelly. Hope you like it. OK. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Beautiful. What do you reckon, George? I think it's gorgeous. You know what I love? I really, really love When it came down, I had that moment when I, I looked at just the texture and it looked like a beetroot where someone's just peeled it off. Yeah. That spectacular, great little visual joke. I look at this dish and I think Northern European, a certain flavour profile. Yeah. And the idea, it's got these Japanese-style flavours is very clever. George, would you like to start? Let's eat our beetroot. If you close your eyes and think, you know, cucumber and miso, and if somebody told you there was a bit of beetroot juice in there, you Please. would not disagree with them, would you? And that's the impact of the colour. Because the little spheres are slightly imperfect, where she's maybe had a little bit of trouble getting them out, you know, where they've gripped actually reinforces the fact that it's a beetroot. Beetroot, yeah. yeah. Putting that aside, wow, the combination of flavour is like, yum. The salmon's cured really well. Jamie and, and uh, Laura had exactly the same amount of time to cure, but Jamie's was weak in flavour and Laura's is spot on. There's a real cleanness in this dish, yeah. It's layered. Yeah. There's an earthiness, there's a slight sweetness, you've got the crunch and the radish, a soft pepper carrot, a light pickle, and there is that sort of it's like Japanese undertone to it. I'm completely terrified of taking this dish up to the judges. It really means a lot to me. It's the fear of me not being able to do that memory justice. And with touch as my sense, I'm pretty nervous about it. <laughs> How are you going? I'm OK. What's the dish? Lemon verbena panna cotta with an apple and lemon jelly and a mascarpone ice cream. We have to talk about it a little bit, the fact that you had a bit of a meltdown halfway through. Mm -hmm. It's OK. It's all right. Obviously, something touched a nerve. Sometimes you've got to, you've got to go through this to come up with something truly brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever experienced feeling really connected like that to food. The more that I thought about it, the more I kept thinking of my grandma. She passed away two years ago today, so I knew I wanted to do something related to her, but and then I just couldn't stop thinking about it and how much I wish she was here to see me, how happy she would be to see me doing this. Because it connects you to, you know, like George refers to it, connects you to the past, and I think it amplifies the the, the memory. Yeah, it did. It, it really did. Do you want to serve it to us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just serving it with some cold spoons to amplify that feeling of really crisp apples. Beautiful. Thank okay, you, Amelia. Thanks.
I love this dish. Yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> and the jelly should have thought it wasn't set. It's actually just got a... Beautiful. Yeah, it's a really nice texture. Some of those little julienne of apple has taken me back mm. to childhood. Yeah. I'm a mum's apple pie. Mm. There's something that there's something there's something apple crumbly about this as well. Really it's a, you kind of get used to this kind of muted jellied lemony apple flavor. And you get a really crisp bit of apple. It's lots of things. It's apple pie. It's jelly and ice cream. I think what's so clever about this dish is that there are all those different textures. There's slippery, there's creamy, there's kind of wobbly, there's slightly different wobbly with the panna cotta. So we're getting loads of texture in terms of what the dish does in the mouth. It's light, it's well balanced, it's refreshing, but at the same time, it's proper comfort food. It's yeah. taking me back to my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that's about as powerful as you can, you can get with a dish.